Let's break this molecule down into recognizable parts. Of course, to start, there's the piperazine ring, a very common structure in atypical antipsychotics. On one end of the structure is a fused benzisothiazole ring, which immediately brings to mind the biocide benzisothiazolinone, which is structurally nearly identical. The structure on the right side was described in a patent for the conversion of an amide to an alpha chloroimine using Velsmeyer reagent, yielding a precursor to the piperazine antipsychotic seroquel. This amide is essentially benzisothiazolinone with a benzi benzene ring spliced between the sulfur and nitrogen. Substituted on the other piperazine nitrogen is the cyclohexane group, or rather dimethylcyclohexane group. My first thought was that this moiety could be prepared by catalytic hydrogenation at unholy pressures. Thalic acid has the perfect carbon backbone for this application. This other group attached to the dimethylcyclohexane I would like to divide up even further to look at more closely. Firstly, we have this imide group, which reminds me of Tom imide synthesis, which I've linked in the video description, along with other resources I used. The next most common imide I can think of is thalimide, derived from thalic acid. Now let's look at the alkyl ring system. This group is known as norbornane, derived from the compound bornane, with all the methyl groups removed. This structure is famous for forming particularly funky carbocations. There are two structural geometries for the imide group in relation to the rings. The exoform is used in the preparation of lorazidone hydrochloride. Let's take two steps back. Both of these two structures are, contain symmetrical, substituted cyclohexane rings. The deers alder reaction is a common carbon-carbon bond-forming reaction which forms symmetrical cyclohexenes from symmetrical precursors. Cyclohexenes can be readily hydrogenated to unsaturated cyclohexanes. I strongly suspect that the deers alder reaction, followed by hydrogenation to remove the double bond preventing reversion to starting products, is thematic to this synthesis. Preparing the correct structural isomers will be covered in later videos in the series. So as you can see, we're really working with four main groups here. With such a complex end product, it's predictable that different strategies may be employed from start to finish. For this video series, I plan on elaborating just one of these routes, and discussing similarities to other drugs of this class. I may touch on possible alternative routes, but I'm primarily going to focus on one which relies heavily on nitrogen alkylation reactions to connect the four different groups discussed in this video. The next video in this series will be taking a closer look at the preliminary deers alder reactions which produce such a significant portion of the structure, and methods for manipulating the functional groups after this hydrogenation.